It's my birthday! Guys, it's my birthday today, and you know what that means? Absolutely nothing. Unfortunately, the world is still affected by this crazy virus that keeps me from going out and celebrating my birthday with the world, which is really no different than any other year. I have never had a birthday party. You can thank my parents for that one. My parents were uh, on the interesting side, and I've had multiple friends and girlfriends promise me that they're going to throw me a birthday party, but it's never happened. So today, I am throwing my very first birthday party, and I'm inviting you. So before I jump into the main portion of the video, please take some time out of your day to celebrate my birthday with me. I took the liberty of getting a card that I said is from you to me, so I'm gonna go ahead and read that right now. Aww. You guys! If you have any, go get some ice cream. Mm. That's really good. It's like the most manly flavor possible. Amaretto Cherry Cordial. It's actually really good. And I know you probably don't have some just sitting around your house, but I did also take the liberty of getting myself a cake. It should be big enough for all of us considering my subscriber base is pretty slim. It's German chocolate, so I hope you like it. I'm actually really looking forward to eating this. I don't know about you guys. I even had some guy come in and do magic. He was, uh, interesting. Unfortunately, he couldn't make all my friends appear in my apartment with me, so in the end, I'd give him a solid 7 out of 10. But all in all, guys, I'm really happy with how the last year went. It was by far one of the biggest years of my life. I finished writing another two books. I published my first two books. I got to appear in a YouTube video with a friend of mine. I then started my own YouTube channel. Guys, this was a fantastic year, and I'm really looking forward to what the next year will hold for me. And I hope you stick around and find out with me. While we're on that topic, I'd like to ask you for a birthday present. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. If you are subscribed, hit the bell to stay notified. If you've already done both of those things, what I'd like for you to do is send my videos out to someone that you think would really benefit from them. I'm not necessarily in it for the view count and the subscriber count. However, it does take more time than you realize to film these videos and edit them. And it is just a little tough sometimes to justify spending all this time making these videos when the view count isn't that high. Again, I'm not complaining, and your comments have really helped me see that I am helping you guys. But I would absolutely love to keep growing. So do me a favor. Pick your favorite video and send it to someone. Share it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, that TikTok thing that the kids are crazy about these days, including myself. Finally, I'd just like to say thank you for being here. Thank you for watching these videos. Thank you for leaving me encouraging comments. You are the reason I make these videos, so thank you. But I don't want to waste any more of your time talking about my interesting, lonely birthday. Let's actually get to the video. Alright everyone, thank you for joining me again on this special birthday edition of three books every writer should read. As usual, I'm going to be recommending three different books. One book on writing craft, one book on personal development, and then one fiction book that I personally have enjoyed. Not gonna lie guys, I'm really excited about today's picks. I promise I didn't save these for my birthday month, but this is probably one of my favorite batches of books. So let's get started. Number one, finish your book in three drafts by Stuart Horwitz. This is the book that more or less inspired me to stop solely focusing on writing, but to also go back and start editing my books. The books that I have published now were sitting in first draft stages for months. And to be honest, I may never have published them if I didn't read books like this. Finish your book in three drafts is not as simple as it sounds. Sure, it helps you to take uh, an overall holistic view of your writing and consolidate it and to make it more efficient. Rather than spending draft upon draft upon draft upon draft upon draft on it, this book is really going to help you figure out what you need to do in each draft, make the most of that draft, and then finish it. More importantly, I found this book to be amazing when it comes to taking a draft that you're already in the middle of, or taking a work in progress where you've already finished a draft, and then figure out where to go from there. It's great at helping you figure out where in the editing stage you actually are, and what still needs to be done. This book was really what helped it all click for me. And since reading this book, going from first draft to finished product has been infinitely less painful. 
The book is unique, too. The guy illustrates it using these 3D models that he actually made videos of. Just little spurts of fiction to give a little more illustration and humor to the concepts that he's trying to explain. It's a fantastic book, and it will help you writing your drafts, no question. Next up, 12 Rules for Life by Jordan Peterson. This is another one of those special books that I can't recommend enough. Every good thing that you've heard about this book is probably true. Jordan Peterson is a genius. He really understands the human condition and why we are the way we are better than most people I know. 12 Rules for Life takes a very simple approach to self-development. It breaks down life into 12 simple, digestible, easy to remember rules that can be applied in many different kinds of ways and improve your life drastically. I was sold the minute I finished rule one, which is in essence, stand up straight with your shoulders back, really illustrating how your mental condition affects how you carry yourself physically. But then more importantly, how you carry yourself physically affects your mental condition. Most of his rules are powerful and so dreadfully simple that it's so easy to see them and wonder why you didn't think of this before. He also goes into such great detail as to why these rules are the way they are. I finished this book maybe two days ago, and it's really what inspired me to make this book recommendation video today, because I could not wait to recommend this book to you. It's that good. A few quick caveats. Just like I said, every good thing you've heard about this book is probably true. Most of the negative things you've heard of this book are also probably true. Number one, he spends way too much time going into detail on why these rules work. Too much detail that it becomes almost irrelevant. It is very easy to read through these rules and find yourself wondering, what on earth does this have anything to do with this rule? Now granted, most times he circles it back around and ties it up in a nice neat little bow, but sometimes he doesn't, and it can be a little on the confusing side. My advice is just read through the book patiently. Give him a chance to explain himself. He won't always do it, but when he does, it's very satisfying. Also, I don't believe that Jordan Peterson is actually a Christian, though he does seem to refer to the Bible in a very reverent manner, more of a historical document, more of guidelines for life, but he doesn't seem to recognize the true power of it nor the authority behind it. He also has some very shaky misunderstandings and interpretations of what the Bible actually means, but in most cases, they don't have any effect on how true the actual rule is. It's just tough to get through those sections sometimes without reaching through the pages and shaking his shoulders trying to get him to understand what the verses are actually saying. That said, it's a great book. Trust me, read it. If you let it, it will change your life. And finally, Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. This is a very controversial book, and not for unquestionable reasons. Let me say right off the bat that I loved the book. I loved it, it was fantastic. A lot of people hate it, and I can see why. The book is set in the distant future when virtual reality becomes more or less the new reality. People spend more time in this computer-generated world than they do in real life. The inventor of this virtual reality has since passed away, and he wants to give away his entire fortune to whoever finds all three clues hidden in his virtual reality world and claim the grand prize at the end. Myself, as a past avid gamer, really appreciated all the nostalgia and the throwbacks to 80s pop culture. However, it is so densely populated with this nostalgia that to some people, that's all they believe the book actually is. They just seem to have a hard time seeing the forest through the trees. Part of it is that they're not the audience of the book. What's truly disturbing is that people hate this book for the wrong reason, and then critics and popular book reviewers agree with those people who hate this book also for the wrong reason. People hate this book because they're not the audience of the book. If you're gonna write this high school drama love story that's aimed toward girls, I promise you the vast majority of males who pick this book up won't connect with it, and therefore will find more reason to hate it, or at the very least dislike it. The same thing happened with Ready Player One. A lot of people who were not the target audience of the book read the book and did not connect with it. Granted, the book was not expertly written, and it did lay on the nostalgia pretty thick, but in the middle of it all, 
It was a really good story. Just as a testament to how much I enjoyed it, I originally got the audiobook version because I was running out of time to read in my free time that I was just able to read while driving. And it was Will Wheaton who was narrating the book who I really enjoyed. But I fell in love with the book so much while listening to it that I didn't want to wait for Wheaton to actually finish reading the book aloud. So I got the book, read it for myself in a few hours, and was so excited to watch the movie that I got the movie loaded up and started it and almost immediately started crying. The movie was terrible, absolute garbage. And I say that with the perspective of someone who read the book. I'm sure it is a perfectly mediocre movie, but in comparison to the book, it's trash. All of the charm that the book had is gone. The plot is completely different and so much worse off for it. The characters are different, the tone is different, and I promise I'm not just saying I hate it because it's different. I mean, it, it wasn't a great movie. It just wasn't. But it also completely butchered what the book was trying to say, what the book was all about. What really annoyed me is they tried to give the movie this message that the book didn't necessarily have that's somewhat uplifting and good, but they didn't pull it off. It just didn't work. All that to say, Ready Player One is a great book. If you like the movie, you'll love the book. Just know that it's different, that it caters to a slightly older generation of games. Rather than this ridiculous racing scene at the very beginning of the film, you get this throwback to classic Dungeons and Dragons in the book. And before you freak out because your mom said that Dungeons and Dragons is the quickest way to send yourself to hell, forget that. It's, it's not evil. It's not going to corrupt your soul. I played it like once in college, I never really got into it. Just like your grandmother was saying that rock music is going to be the doom of the world, your mom probably told you some misinformed lie that Dungeons and Dragons is going to kill you. Just wanted to clear that up real quick. In any case, guys, those are my three picks for this month. If you've already read these books, drop a note in the comments, let me know what you thought, let me know what other books that you think I should read. If you want to support me for my birthday in any other way, check out my book, link in the description. I'm looking forward to seeing you all again. Until then, get some writing done. Not gonna lie, this that wasn't as dramatic as I thought it would be. But it is pretty cold. It's good. Hey, look, it's me. Oh, crap. That was surprisingly loud. I honestly didn't expect it to be that loud.